Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash, and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of US government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the US government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. The infamous Julian Assange has made comments in the past related to the announced release of many of his controversial intelligence leaks. He has now stated that there will be UFO-related materials. Recently, WikiLeaks revealed alleged compromised Department of Defense cable communications indicating that US armed forces may be in the midst of a secret war with UFOs. According to the sources that were revealed, there was an all-out alert issued by Air Force Space Command after the emergence of a large flotilla of airborne unidentified objects from the floor of the southern seas of the Antarctic. This armada of unknown objects headed toward Guadalajara, Mexico. It is said that Julian Assange has been falsely accused of sexual assault charges by authorities in Sweden which resulted in his arrest in Great Britain. That one of his accusers, Anne Radin, has fled and is presently in hiding, among the Palestinians, is a strong indication that the charges, according to those familiar with government tactics, is a ploy to silence Assange's evidence. U.S. warplanes are said to have been deployed to meet a massive fleet of UFOs on the 10th of June 2004, and all radar systems intensified on the inbound targets, the massive fleet supposedly then resubmerged into the Antarctic Oceans. Recently, another massive emergence of the unknown objects headed toward the southern tip of South America and flew over Chile. 
Experts say that the immediate threat posed by these huge displays is the dangerous waves they generate as they surface which is capable of sinking oceanic vessels. In the most recent appearance of the UFO Armada from the Antarctic Southern Ocean, one cruise ship was nearly capsized with 160 aboard while another vessel was overturned with a crew of 60 with only 20 rescued survivors. This story was originally released by the European Times Online which had reported that the Russian president was receiving intelligence briefings indicating that the US was involved in secret military confrontations with massive UFO formations originating from underwater bases in and around the Antarctic Oceans. These events corroborate a number of other incidents over the past recent years. In 1991 a wave of UFO sightings swept over Mexico City during the widely awaited eclipse. The luminous objects were recorded by many handheld video cameras owned by citizens and offered to TV news crews. In October 13, 2010 the dramatic appearance of UFO activity over New York City caused the Air Force to shut down air traffic over the city for 24 hours. Thousands of witnesses stood spellbound as they watched UFOs in the skies over the city. Commonly known as unidentified submerged objects USOs, there have been numerous reports over the last four decades of startling appearances of underwater objects suddenly emerging and harassing ships and aircraft. The late Ivan T. Sanderson, a well-known TV personality on animal behavior as well as a former intelligence officer during World War II, published more than one book on the subject considerably ahead of his time. Friends close to him allege that he never gave up his research on USOs, and may even have been viewed as a dangerous nuisance by his former espionage employers. Sanderson contracted a rare cancer that ended his life quickly like so many others who have been deemed inconvenient to sensitive government matters. A massive sighting of USOs terrified several people on the California coast. Police received phone calls from frightened citizens telling them of bright objects emerging from the Pacific and flying into the night sky at rapid speeds. There is a very curious and questionable history of Navy involvement and lost aircraft over the Antarctic continent that compels me to look further. I will keep you all posted. Thank you.